This video was made possible by EA Game Changers. Hey guys, how you going? This is Billy Eight World again, and the Battlefield 5 open beta is now available, so some of you guys are probably already playing on the brand new Rotterdam map, which is a completely new location for the Battlefield franchise, and because of that, it's probably a story that most of you guys don't know all that well yet. In saying that though, I've got to say that the history of this battle is pretty fascinating and I think it really helps explain why the early months of World War II went the way that they did. And so that's what we're going to take a look at today. In another Real History episode, we're going to take a look at the German invasion of the Netherlands, the Battle of Rotterdam and the infamous Rotterdam Blitz. So to kick off, just to put the Battle of Rotterdam in context, well, in my last Battlefield 5 Real History video, we covered the German attack on the port of Narvik. And as I mentioned, it was part of the German invasion of Norway, which was actually almost repelled by an Allied counterattack spearheaded by a British naval task force. One of the other things I mentioned in that video was that a big factor that played into the German victory was their invasion of France and the Low Countries in May of 1940. And that's where the Battle of Rotterdam comes in, because it was one of the definitive battles of the campaign and a key linchpin that eventually led to the collapse of Western Europe. So what's so important about Rotterdam? Well, for a start, it's not only a major city in the Netherlands, it's also one of the major shipping ports on the West European coast. And as I said in the last episode, in the early years of World War II, Germany was desperate to disrupt Allied shipping and to gain easier access to the Atlantic Ocean. Not just that, but the Netherlands was also close enough to Britain to act as a strategic base for aircraft, which would be needed in any future plans to invade the British Isles. And most importantly, unlike the French, which had built a fearsome line of fortresses along its border called the Maginot Line, the Dutch and Belgian borders were considerably less defended. The invasion of France, Belgium and the Netherlands, or what the Germans codenamed Case Yellow, began on the 10th of May 1940. And like I said before, the hammer fell initially on the Dutch and Belgian borders, with the main thrust of the attack being centred around the Belgian Ardennes Forest. The Netherlands, though, were attacked in the early morning hours of the 10th of May by German aircraft and paratroopers who targeted Dutch airfields. And because of this, despite stiff resistance, the Dutch Air Force, which was already outnumbered by the Germans, had lost over half its strength by the end of the first day. Rotterdam and the nearby Walhaven airfield were also attacked in this initial wave by German paratroopers and by assault teams in Heinkel seaplanes. And these troops were under instructions to capture the bridges across the Maas River in Rotterdam to allow German land forces to cross later on. The crazy thing is, though, the Dutch didn't even realise any of this was happening until it was too late, because they actually thought that the German planes were on their way to invade Britain. And so even if the Dutch forces at Walhaven were adequate enough to defend the base, they were completely caught off guard and the Germans quickly overwhelmed them and started to move towards the city. Now, the Dutch garrison at Rotterdam itself was also not very strong because even though it numbered over 7,000 men, only 1,000 were actually combat troops. And although the Germans numbered about the same, the Fallschirmjäger paratroopers they faced off against were a considerably tougher and more elite unit. The Dutch were fighting on home territory though, so they did have an advantage when it came to supply and reinforcements, but the Germans overwhelmingly had the element of surprise. And so fairly quickly, they were able to establish a bridgehead in Rotterdam, and all they had to do was hold out until the rest of the invasion force broke through. This wouldn't happen for another few days though, and in that time, Dutch and German forces fought a pretty fierce battle across the River Maas. And in fact, the Dutch were even able to bring in two small naval boats up the river, which shelled the Germans until they were driven off by enemy aircraft attacks. Like I said before though, all the Germans really had to do was hold out, and so they set up stubborn defensive positions in a number of key buildings, and even a moored passenger ship. And what's probably most surreal about this part in the battle is that while all of this was happening, the Dutch, who lived in the city, were shouting and cheering on their own forces from their windows, which were literally right next to the action. Eventually though, despite the fact that Dutch forces were reinforced, German troops and most importantly tanks did eventually break through to the city after four days of fighting, 
But the issue was the German tanks of this era weren't the behemoths we know from the later years of World War II and could easily be knocked out by well-positioned AT guns. This meant that the German commanders were reluctant to push their armour much further into the city than they had to, which honestly was probably a pretty smart decision. And so that led to Hermann Göring, the infamous commander of the Nazi Luftwaffe, to make the decision which would seal the fate of Rotterdam to level it to the ground in a massive bombing raid. The raid, which would come to be known as the Rotterdam Blitz, came in the afternoon of the 14th of May, after a number of ultimatums were given, pressuring the Dutch to surrender. And as the Dutch Air Force was basically non-existent by this point in the battle, and as most of their anti-aircraft guns had been moved to other locations, they were practically helpless. The German aircraft were basically able to bomb the city without opposition, and because of this, around 2.6 square kilometres of the city was levelled, equating to around 25,000 buildings. And of course, the civilian casualties were obviously also very high, with almost a thousand people killed, which was over five times the Dutch military casualties from the preceding land battle. Now, to finish up, the bombing of Rotterdam may have been one of the first cases of the strategic destruction of a city in World War II, but it certainly wasn't the last, and it definitely wasn't the largest. But the reason it's one of the most important is because it was such a huge factor in why all Dutch forces surrendered to the Germans just a few hours later. Like I said earlier, the Dutch really had no effective anti-aircraft defences, and any allies in a position to help them were also dealing with German incursions into their own territories. And so after Rotterdam, when the Germans started threatening to bomb even more Dutch cities, they really had no choice but to give up or else they'd be defending a pile of rubble. With the capture of the Netherlands, the Germans were able to pretty much accomplish all of the objectives I mentioned earlier, which was to be a huge thorn in the side of the Allies for years to come. But not just that, the fact the Germans now controlled that territory exposed the Belgians' northern flank, and because of this they were only really able to hold out for another two weeks. With Belgium now in German hands, this in turn exposed the French flank, and against far superior German armoured tactics, even they, one of the strongest European powers, were defeated in June. And that basically only left Britain and its Commonwealth nations to stand alone in the West against the German Blitzkrieg. But we'll leave that thought there because that's a really big topic and we'll cover that in an entirely different video. But anyway, guys, that just about wraps up this video, so make sure you let me know what you think about the Battle of Rotterdam in the comments section down below. Also, please let me know if you think there's any other interesting World War II topics you'd like me to cover in this Real History series, because I'd really like to hear from you. As always, though, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please check out the links in the description if you want to see any more of these videos. And don't forget, you can also find my Twitter and Discord links down there as well if you want to keep in touch with me. And as always, until next time, see you later, and have a good one.